My name is Alex Dorge and I'm an Ansible Solution Specialist. Today I'm going to go through how Ansible and Terraform can be used together. So what are Ansible and Terraform? Both of them are great automation tools, but they really have different ways of looking at automation. Terraform is great in terms of defining what my state needs to be for provisioning. What I mean by that is, say I want 25 virtual machines, but each one needs to connect to a different network, a different number of CPUs, maybe a different template to be built off of. I can define all of that in a Terraform file and then that state gets maintained. So if I decide later on, I wanna add in two more, I just update that overall file. Terraform checks to see what the difference is and adds in two virtual machines in this case or takes off depending on how you adjust that Terraform file. So it really is a great way to define what my infrastructure looks like. Ansible looks at things in a different fashion. It really looks at kind of task-based orientation is how I refer to it. So similar to how I would do things from a command line, I have to register to satellite first, then I have to add in repositories, then maybe I want to install a specific package via yum. That's really how Ansible looks at automation. This is great as I look into easy ways to get used to a technology, because it translates very close to what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, and I can leverage this across Linux, Windows, networking, APIs, really a full range of suites, and orchestrate all these pieces together. Does this mean I can orchestrate Ansible and Terraform together? The answer absolutely is yes. So especially if I'm already familiar with Terraform and maybe I'm used to writing you know, some of those main Terraform files and I've got some of my infrastructure already provisioned with Ansible, I can integrate those two technologies together. So maybe I have ServiceNow as my front end or maybe I wanna run everything through Git operations. I can make changes to a you know, Terraform file, have that call into Ansible to start the provisioning process and then once provisioning is done, hand it over to Ansible for the rest of it. So maybe I need to perform that registration process, deploy an application, perform security hardening, patching, updates, things that kind of go on after that provisioning is complete. And then again, I can call back to Terraform to do that destruction process, really maintaining the full life cycle of my environment. So this gives me that flexibility to you know, leverage images and things and templates created by Terraform, but still maintain you know, the full application development lifecycle that may exist for virtual machines after that provisioning is done. So let's look into how I can actually use those tools together in a demonstration. So looking at the automation platform, I'm logged into Ansible controller. So this really is my kind of orchestration layer that I'm looking at. I've got two different workflows here that really show the two different ways that I've designed trying to leverage Terraform and Ansible together. So in this case, I can actually just ask the end user really what they want to do via a survey. So in this case, you know, I can launch a template and earn the virtual machines that I want to create, the different operating systems. And then this uses Jinja to actually build out the template for me, which I'll show in a minute. Or I can leverage GitOps to essentially leverage the file that you create in Git. And then once it's committed to the main branch, kick off the larger workflow. What does that workflow look like? In this case, my workflow goes through that process of leveraging Terraform to create or destroy the virtual machine. In this case, I'm leveraging it all through VMware, so then I'm configuring that particular host, so whether it's Linux or Windows, I've got both that handled by Ansible, and then I go through the process of installing a web application, adding it into my load balancer, and then notifying the end user that, hey, by the way, your provisioning process has been completed. So obviously, I can leverage this through some sort of Git operations, CICD process, really however you wanna leverage that capability. So let's look at you know, how I'm doing this in Ansible. So in Ansible, I did talk about that Jinja template. So I will be the first to admit, I am not necessarily a Terraform expert, but I know enough to you know, be able to provision virtual machines inside vSphere. So in this case, again, I've got the basics defined and this basically leveraged the Jinja template to build out a certain number of virtual machines based on how much that end user puts into the survey that I showed before. So again, it gives you a lot of capability outside of just, you know, hey, I want the user to be able to do one VM at a time, which is not necessarily useful uh, if, I, if I want the capability to build these things out. So I can enter in, you know, as many VMs I want via commas, and that will basically loop through and create that file and then run through it. The other option is for me to actually use a Terraform main file and manually update this myself, which I would say is more common because if I'm already using Terraform and I want to integrate the tools together, I already have the expertise to put all these different pieces in there. So I've already got, you know, in this case, three different virtual machines leveraging different templates. So I've got RHEL 7 and RHEL 8. And then I have a playbook that goes through this process. So 
as you can imagine, I need to have those state files living somewhere. So I actually have a second repository that I put all these pieces in. So conveniently called Ansible Terraform. I either copy in that main file if I'm going that the GitOps route, or I leverage Jinja to create the template if I'm not going that way. And then I go through the process of decrypting the Terraform files, which I'll show in a second, so I can maintain state, but in a secure fashion. Leverage Terraform to provision those virtual machines. Put that, those state files back in my repo and push. And then I go through the process of tagging all the virtual machines and then heading it on to Ansible for the rest of the process, which you saw in the workflow. So jumping in, I actually do want to say, yep, this process is good. I'm ready to really provision these different pieces because, again, obviously, I'm comfortable with these two and three VMs, so really conveniently called server one, server two, and server three. So I will save. Conveniently, I do have additional pieces where I have to sign all of my projects for them to work properly. So I will perform that signature portion using Ansible sign. And then I can push it to my repository and say, updated main to build three V. So this will trigger that process to actually build or actually trigger Terraform. So obviously if I had an existing Terraform main file, it would either create or not. So I can see, I can actually go back into the jobs and see that that job has actually kicked off. So I did say this is leveraging an Ansible Terraform additional project. So this is where that project lives. As you can imagine, I could have a separate project for either VMware, for Azure, for AWS, or for each individual team that needs to maintain their own infrastructure. So in this case, I just have that one VMware one. I can see that main.tf that I built out. So this will actually update as soon as it finishes with the current VMs and all those pieces. You might think, hey, I've got a variables file. Am I storing all my information here? I've just got the variables fine, but the actual variables themselves are encrypted using Ansible Vault. Same thing for the state file. I've got that encrypted because it has IP addresses and things like that. So I don't necessarily want to have that available via the public internet. Um, so for me, this gives that capability exactly what I want to maintain state while not, again, providing this information out to every single end user. I could leverage something like system mounts in automation controller to store all that information locally. I don't necessarily have to push it um, into a GitHub or GitLab project. But for me, this kind of provides that capability of what I'm looking for to ease that process. Again, this has launched that entire workflow. It's going to go through the process of updating those VMs, taking care of the process of what I need to, to have, in this case, three VMs of different configurations, different templates, all built out in vSphere. And I can be off and running and not have to worry about, you know, trying to use Ansible to configure those in three different fashions. So I can see that those three VMs are being built. So those three VMs, server one, server two, server three, leveraging different templates because that's how I define my um, main file and it will go through that process. And once this particular job is done, I can see it's actually part of a larger workflow. So once this is done, it will then call into the remaining workflow and go through the process of, you know, syncing in the inventory, configuring and deploying that application. This gives you a lot of flexibility in, in terms of designing how your processes look after provisioning is completed. So it doesn't necessarily have to be set up this way, but for me, this is the easiest way that I've found to integrate ter ter uh, Terraform and Ansible together. So where can you go from here? Uh, the Ansible team has put together quite a bit of collateral on you know, really how those two tools work together, trying to Terraform clouds with Ansible, really doing similar to what I did in terms of having Ansible call Terraform, do the process, push it to a repository and go from there. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of designing how this process looks for you. But again, I can leverage that fully defined infrastructure state with then what I need to do post deployment. So I can really handle all those day one, day two operations and that full life cycle of my virtual environment. So thanks for taking the time out to learn a little more about how Ansible and Terraform can work together. The tools don't necessarily have to compete and I don't really have to learn both tools if I don't want to. But if I'm already using Terraform and I need to have some of those day two operations, this is a great way to leverage them both together. Thank you.